Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make this tote bag. Let's get started. Okay, so once you've purchased and downloaded your patterns, you're gonna want to print them out. So the best settings for this is to make sure you have your printer set to print actual size and the patterns available are in A4 size only. Once you've got your patterns printed out, you can then roughly cut them out and then we are going to reinforce them with some card. So by reinforcing the patterns, we're just gonna make them a bit easier to draw around once they're cut out, but also this gives them some longevity. Now, if you are planning to make a few different tote bags with these patterns, I suggest you using a thicker card like a one or two millimeter gray board for this. And you want to make sure you have your patterns nicely butted up to each other where that is applicable. Once you've glued your patterns onto your card, you can then cut them out nice and neatly. So you should now have your patterns cut out looking a bit like this. So once you've cut your patterns out, we're gonna focus mostly on the bag elements to start with. So we're gonna cut out the main body part of the bag and the upper panels. So all the information about the leather that I use in this video is in the information that is with the pattern packs. So what I like to do is just draw around my patterns and then once I've done that, I will then use a ruler and a rotary knife to cut them out nice and neat. Okay, so you should have your three pieces looking a little bit like this. What we're gonna do now is draw on the sky line because we want to just reduce the thickness along the edges of these pieces. So for that, I've just used a compass and I've attached my pen in and I have set my compass to the right width needed. And we're just gonna draw around all four sides of the patterns. Okay, so I will be using a bell skiver to skive the edges of my leather down to half thickness. And if you don't have access to a bell skiver, that's fine. You will have to do your skiving by hand. So I am actually going to finish doing my skiving by hand. So on the long edges on our pieces, I will be skiving them down to nothing. Because this area is going to have sort of multiple layers and turned edges, we want to make it so that there is a very smooth transition between them. And so by having this skive down to nothing, this is the best method to do that. Once we've done our skiving, we can then mark on our glue line. So we're gonna use the same method and mark that onto our pieces. Okay, so now we've done our skiving, we can start to glue our bag. So we're gonna start by doing the turnover edge on the bottom part of our bag. We're gonna glue along those long edges and then using a bone folder, we can help to start make the turn happen. And then we're just gonna fold that over and the point where we want our, our edge to hit is that glue line that we marked earlier. 
And so I using contact adhesive as my glue here. So I like to use a glue called Bostick 6092, but most contact adhesives will work fine for this. Once you've glued that seam down, you're gonna tap it with a hammer to get it nice and flat. Once we've done that and we've tapped the seam down, we're going to glue on our top panel. So we're gonna put glue on the back of that sort of turned over edge there and then on the bottom of our top part of the body. And then we can glue these together, making sure that they are in line. And then once again, tapping down with a flat headed hammer. Once we've done that, we're going to set our dividers to three millimeters and draw a line across both of these. And then we're going to set our dividers once again to six millimeters and we're going to draw a second line. So we're going to have two lines of stitching along this part of the bag. Once you've got your stitch lines marked on, you can then use your stitch marker and punch this along the line. So I'm using a 3.38 millimeter pricking iron, but you can use whatever irons you have available. And if you have diamond irons, it's absolutely fine to use these here also. Once we've done stitch marking, we're going to double hand stitch along both of these lines. And you want to try and do this in one thread length. So ideally, if you take a double hand span or a double arm span length of thread, that should be enough. So once you've done your stitching, you can then use your hammer and just tap those stitches down. And now we're going to work on the handles and the logo badge on the tote bag. So we're going to cut our two straps three quarters of an inch wide. And we're going to square the ends and then mark them as 25 inches overall. And once again, we're going to cut them square on that end as well. And once we've done that, we're just going to slightly nick the corners here. And then we're going to use a number one edge tool and edge the whole of the grain side of our two shoulder straps. And then using our pattern on the flesh side, we can mark where they're going to be stitched onto the bag. So we can mark that length onto either end of our strap. And then using our set square, draw that line across. And then we're going to number one edge in between these two marks. So I've already gone ahead and put my logo onto my little logo tab and you can do the same as well. And then we're just going to stain and polish the edges of our straps and the logo tab. So once you're done staining and polishing, we're then going to put a crease line on. So I use a screw crease and a portable hob to heat my crease. I'm just going to draw our lines onto all our bits. We're now going to mark for stitching. So we're just going to transfer that mark from the back of our straps onto the front. If you find it easier, you can also just use the pattern and draw it on from there. Then we're going to even up on both sides and using our dividers, draw our stitch line around. My dividers for the stitching are usually set to about one eighth of an inch. We can also draw on our stitch line onto our little logo tab. And once we've got that line drawn on, we can then sky the very last sort of five eighths of an inch or so down to half thickness. 
And once we've done that, I'm actually going to put some Tolkien oil on because I want to get these to a point where they're nicely finished before I put them onto the bag because it's going to be easier to do that now than after they're attached to the bag. So now they've had their Tolkien oil put on, we can then draw on or mark on where our straps need to be. So we're only going to put our logo tab on one side, so you only need to mark that onto one side of your bag. If you'd like to put two logo tabs on, you can do, that's absolutely fine, and you'll just need to transfer the marks onto both sides. But for my one, I'm putting this on one side, so we'll only mark that out for one. Now we've got our locator marks onto our bag, we can then put some glue on these and get our strap and our logo tab stuck in place. And you want to make sure that that is set straight in the middle of your bag. And then glue on our shoulder straps. Once our straps are glued on, we can then stitch mark these with our stitch marker. And then double hand stitch these in place. So on these shoulder straps, I do two back stitches to start and one and a half back stitches to finish so that they both sort of even up and look the same once we've finished our stitching. And this can be a bit awkward to do with the bag sort of flapping around. So it might take you a little bit longer than usual to stitch in place. And once we've done that, we're just gonna trim our threads off and then using a little bit of PVA glue, we can just set those threads in place so they don't come out and that will just keep them nicely locked away. So what we're going to do now is actually get our pocket cut out for our lining. So we are going to get our lining material and then draw around our pocket pattern and cut this out. Now once you've got your pocket cut out, on the, the back side of the pocket we're going to mark 3 eighths of an inch and draw a line around the three sort of sides with the cutout. And then we're also gonna mark a three quarter of an inch line. So that's gonna be our sky line and our glue line. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna hand sky the edges of this down to nothing so we can create a nice smooth turnover on our pocket edges. And once we've done that, we can then glue these down. Again, I'm using the contact adhesive for this. And then tap the edges down with a hammer. So we should have something that looks a little bit like this. And we've also, I've gone ahead now and cut out the sort of pocket lining tab. So what I've done is draw the centre line on and I'm also now skiving the two ends because these are going to actually wrap around the back of our pocket. And we can now pop some glue on this and because I am using contact adhesive I can glue this and then put that to one side whilst I finish prepping the pocket. So we're going to mark half an inch down from our sort of raw edge on our pocket. And I'm using a sort of gold gel pen here because that matches the colour of the pocket. And that's going to be sort of where we want our sort of tab to sit to. So what we're going to do is just glue from just behind there because this is a suede that I am using. I don't want to get any glue on that because that's not going to come off. And now we've done that, we're going to glue it so that the sort of T section of this is facing downwards onto the front of our pocket. And we're going to put a bit of glue on the back and glue the rest of this pocket reinforcement sort of strip down.
and putting a little bit of glue on the end of those tabs and gluing them around the ends. And we can now tap this edge down with our hammer. And we're then going to set our dividers to about three millimeters. And we're going to draw a line across this top here. So we want to mark this three millimeter line in. So it's three eighths of an inch from either end. And then we can stitch mark this with our pricking irons. And then we're just going to double hand stitch along this top line. So now we've got that, we can then tap this with our hammer. And then I'm just going to use some thin, this is hemming tape. So this is quarter of an inch double sided tape. And we're just going to pop this on to our pocket. So we're going to pop that to one side for the minute and get the lining of our bag sorted. So we're just going to overcut this and then we're going to straight edge one end. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and draw a center mark in my bag. And we're just going to line up our lining with that edge. I'm just going to start from one side. So we can then mark the center of this onto our liner. And now using the patterns, we're going to mark on the four corners of our pocket. We're just going to connect these lines up so we've got something to see when we're going to just attach our pocket. So what I'm going to do is just remove the backing of that double sided tape. By having the double sided tape, we get rid of the need for glue and because I'm using suede, that makes things a lot easier. So we're going to put our pocket on and then using our mallet, we're just going to tap that in place. And now we're going to get this ready for stitch marking. So like I said, I'm using suede, so it's a bit awkward sometimes to see your line. But we're going to set our dividers to three millimeters and we're going to draw around those three edges. And then using our stitching iron, we're going to prick along that line and then double hand stitch the pocket in place. And once that's stitched on, we're once again going to tap that down with our hammer. And we're now going to fit the magnetic closure. So from that center mark, we're going to mark three quarters of an inch down. And that's going to be the center of our magnetic closure. And we can pop the magnetic closure backing on and just draw where those two lines are going to be. So I am using a little sort of sharpened screwdriver here, which I can use just to make those two slits for the legs of the magnet to go through. Now, once you have those two little slits made, you can pop one side of your magnetic closure in and pop the backing on, and then we're gonna fold those legs outwards. So I like to use my set square for this. I'm just gonna fold those legs out so that the magnet is nice and secure. Right, so now we've got that fitted, we're just going to mark the overall length of our liner. So this is going to be 31 inches. So we're going to draw a line across the bottom part of our leather and we're just going to cut that nice and straight. Now we've done that, we're going to line it up and mark the center point 
of that end of our liner and we're also going to fit the second part of our magnetic closure onto this side of the lining. So we're now going to start attaching the liner of our bag. So I'm going to use double-sided tape for this and I'm just going to put that along this one top edge and stick that in place. And we're going to want that so that's going to be at the other side of our skive line that we made earlier. And we're going to do that on both sides and then once they're both stuck down what we're going to do is actually mark where our turnover is going to finish. So that's going to be the second line uh, from the top on our pattern. And what I'm actually going to do is actually put some masking tape on that line because I don't want to get any excess glue below that line. So by putting the masking tape on, that's going to keep the rest of the sort of lining of my bag nice and safe from the glue. We're going to put some glue on and then we're going to start making the turned edge at the top end of our bag. So once again, I'm using my bone folder to help turn the edge to start with before fin finish turning it and gluing it down. And we're going to once again use that masking tape as a guide to where our edge of the turnover needs to be glued to. And we're going to do this on both sides of our bag and then once we've done that we can then tap that seam down with our hammer and then you can actually remove the double sided tape now if you like as well. Once we've done that we're then going to use our dividers at three millimeters and draw a line across the top of both sides and then using our stitch marker we're going to stitch mark this. And then we're going to double hand stitch along this top seam. And once we've done that, we can then tap this down with our hammer. We're now going to secure the rest of the lining. So what I'm going to do is just draw around the whole of the lining and then pop some glue down on both the lining and the main bag. Once we've done that, we're going to cut the lining flush with one side of a bag. And on the other side, we're going to mark a 5 8 inch line away from the edge of our bag because we're actually going to use this as a turnover on the inside of our bag for the seam. We're going to do the same on the bottom flap as well. So we're going to add 5 8 of an inch from that cutout and cut a little sort of fold over tab there. We're going to do that on both sides. So you can see once that's stitched together, we're going to have this tab here rolled over the edge. So it's going to cover our cut seams. Right, so now we're going to start making our piping. So I've cut three strips that are three quarter of an inch wide and one millimeter thick and I'm going to use some two millimeter round belting as my filler. So we're going to cut two lengths of our piping leather to the same length of our bag. We're going to mark three eighths of an inch in from the end and that's the length of what our filler is going to be. So we're going to skive both ends of our filler and then I've gone ahead and drawn a centre line on the leather so I know where I can glue my filler and we're then going to glue that in place. So once it's glued what we're going to do is fold over the edges. Now we want this to be flush so we're going to neatly fold the edges of our piping leather so they are flush on both sides. 
and then using our bone folder we can just make sure that that filler is nice and tightly glued in. So what we're going to do now is glue the piping to our bag. So we're going to do this on the tab side of the bag and we're just going to put a bit of glue on both the piping and the bag and then we're going to glue this in place. So what we want is for the piping to disappear just below where the stitching across the top of our bag starts. So we're going to have that folded out and around so it's done, going to disappear in the stitching and we're going to do the same at the bottom. Once we've got that glued in place we're actually going to trim the edges because like I said we're going to use this tab to fold the leather over and cover the seam so we want to very carefully cut off any excess from our piping. And once we've done that, what I'm going to do to make this a bit easier for stitching, I'm going to use a 5mm diamond iron and stitch mark this piping all the way through the leather. So that way we're going to have a guide on the back of our sort of stitching as to where we can all through. So one thing to note when we do this and we do get to stitching, the marks that we're going to follow are going to be backwards or the other way around. So if you have a left-handed stitching iron, you can use that because that will make the pricking irons or the marks the right way around when we actually come to stitch it. So this will make a bit more sense uh, in a bit once we actually get onto the stitching. And by stitching all the way through, it's, like I said, it's going to give us a guide. So it's going to make this a bit easier because we're going to end up stitching through about six layers of leather. So once we've got the piping glued in place and stitch marked on the long sides, we can then put the piping that's going to go on the bottom of our bag in place also. So we want this so it just sticks out where the cut ends are going to be. It's just going to finish there. So you can see it's going to be nice and flush to the edges and then where it gets to the end, we're just going to taper that out and glue that down. And once again, that's going to get trimmed and then it's stitch marked all the way through. So now we've got everything stitch marked and in place, what we're going to do is glue our long sides together. So we're going to put glue on the edges of all of our long sides. And once we've done that, we can then start gluing our bag together. So we're going to make sure the top edge and the bottom edge line up exactly and then we can just glue the rest of our bag down. And now what I'm going to do is put some double sided tape onto this sort of tab side. So if you're not using a suede then you can use glue on this. If you've got a leather that is going to be easy to get any excess glue off. Like I said this is suede so it's not easy to get any excess glue off. So by using the double sided tape I'm going to keep the, the bag nice and clean of glue. So we're going to tape that down on both of our tabs and now the tape that I'm using is a bit wide so I'm just going to trim that off with my scissors so it's nice and flush to the edge. What we're going to do now is just take off the backing and then we're just going to fold this nice and tight over the edge of our back. So like I said, this is going to cover that seam. So we're not going to have any raw edges inside the bag. And now on this top corner, we can just trim the corner so it's a bit more of a triangle. So it's not going to have a butt end at the top of that bag there. And now we're just going to start stitching. So this is going to be a bit awkward because like I said, we've got six layers of leather to stitch through. So by having those stitch marks that we put on earlier, this is going to make our life a lot easier because we're only going to have to all through about two layers of leather. We want to make this top end nice and secure. So actually we want to start with doing three to four back stitches to start with. And we're also going to have one stitch over the edge of our leather as well.
And once we've done our back stitches and our stitch over the edge, we can then continue to stitch towards ourselves. So we want to pull this quite tight because like I said, we've got quite a few layers that we're going through here and we want this seam to be nice and strong. And so by using the piping on our seams, basically what that does is create a sort of like a buffer area. So once we've turned our bag the right way around, you're not gonna see any of the threads. If we didn't have that piping, once we turn the bag around, then there's a likelihood that you could start to see some of the threads. When we get to the bottom, we're just gonna stop about a one pricking mark short of the edge. And then we're gonna do three to four back stitches just to get that nice and secure. So now we're going to start gluing the bottom bits of our bag together. Now this is the sort of awkward seam. So we just want to very carefully put some glue on here and on the other side of that seam as well. And then we're going to glue that so it's easy to start from the two ends first and then work your way into the middle. We want to make sure that the end of our little piping piece is just poking out a little bit. And once we've done that, we're then going to put some double sided tape on this as well. And then we can glue this or stick this around that seam. So with the central seam that we have from the size of our bag, we're just going to pop that to one side and it's going to naturally want to fall either one way or the other. And then we can just fold our tab around. So you can see I've also just trimmed the corners so that they are not square. That's just going to help keep everything a bit neater once we've done with our stitching. And now we can double hand stitch this. Now this is the awkward seam. So you take your time with this. It will take a little bit of time to do because like I said, we're going through a lot of layers and this bottom seam is awkward because we can't put it in the clams. So we will start with at least three back stitches just to, to secure the ends in place. And again, we're going to stitch this nice and tight. Okay, so when we get to the center of our bottom seam down here, what we're gonna do is skip one of our stitch marks out and do one long stitch over where the central seam of our bag actually meets this bottom seam. So the reason for that is because we don't want to actually all through the center of that seam because it can damage it. So we're gonna do one long stitch over it and then we're gonna back stitch and then continue stitching towards ourselves. So there's gonna be three stitches in this area. So this is going to make sure that the seam in this area is nice and tight and it's also going to mean that we don't accidentally damage anything else on our bag. So once you've done that you can continue stitching the rest of the seam as normal. And so when you get to the end we're going to want to do three to four back stitches to make sure that thread is secure and that this seam is nice and tight. Okay, so now we have finished stitching, we want to get our bag the right way around. So the best way to do this is to start from those two bottom corners and tuck them in on themselves and then we can slowly fold the rest of the bag over. And 
once you have your bag the right way around, we're going to want to just work those seams. So you can push the seams with your thumb just to work them out. And then we will do a bit more to them once we've got the rest of our bag sorted. All right, so now our bag is the right way around. What we want to do is just work on the seams. So if you've got any excess glue, you can just rub that off with a cloth. And now we're going to use these leather edge pliers. So we want to make sure that the ends of these are covered so they don't damage your leather. And we're just going to squeeze these against the seam just to get our leather to sit how we want it. And we're going to do this down both of the long sides and across the bottom of our seam as well. So here is our finished tote bag. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials. Now if you do use these patterns to make a bag for yourself, I'd love to see your creations. So you can tag me on Instagram, I am at jhleather, or you can drop a picture in our Discord channel and there's links for that in the description below. But that is it from me from this video and I shall see you in the next one.